So let's continue our discussions in relation with William Walker Atkinson's work when it comes to relating with each other. Notice how I put with here in capitals. It was said that William Walker Atkinson also wrote the book The Kabbalion, which contains one of my favorite quotes. The all is mind, the universe is mental. And as we relate this over to our Neville Goddard conversations, he says, we are all imagination. Now, over the last few weeks, we've been discussing how everything exists within us. And so in that regard, let's dive into this quote here. Mental atmosphere, he says. Those who read these words may remember readily the feeling they have experienced when coming in contact with certain people, how some radiate an atmosphere of cheerfulness, brightness, etc. And so let us dive into this in a way that will allow us to maintain that ideal state of mind, which then is expressed as an experience of ideal mental atmosphere in which people show up and say, you have a great energy. It feels great to be around you. And as I've worked with this information over the years, and then I read this quote here from William Walker Atkinson, it articulates what's going on with vivid accuracy. The best suggestionists are those who have acquired the suggestive manner, which is developed by the exercise of authoritative utterances and commands, the physical appearance, manner, and tones arising from a reflection of the mental state within. Let's look at that. Arising from a reflection of the mental state within. If we go back to some of the other things we spoke about in regards to William Walker Atkinson's work, I'll put a link in the description to a number of discussions we've done. He also mentioned that we are both the suggester and suggestee within. So then upon observation, we allowed ourselves to enter a state of mind based on what we were consciously or subconsciously suggesting to ourselves when it comes to relating with each other. So think of a time then when you were in flow and as you were in this experience, you entered a room and there was a number of people in there and they started gravitating towards you. And perhaps someone came up to you and said, you have an amazing energy. It feels so great to be around you. And you might have even noticed that your words seem to flow fluidly. You might even notice you carried yourself with a heightened degree of confidence, your mannerisms, your voice tonality, how you moved, how you communicate, it felt like a dance with everyone. All of that was a natural expression from a mental state within. And you might have also observed that when you walked in the room, let's say there was people sitting across the room, and they too felt it. They looked in your direction. So they might have been looking in another direction. They might have been deeply engaged in a conversation, sitting at a booth or a table, tucked away in the side of the room. However, as soon as you walked in the room, Everybody's attention went your way. And so when we look at authoritative utterances, commands, appearance, manner, we recognize them as visible causes. So let's go a little deeper into this. He says, thought produces motion in matter. And so these subtle energies, as he says here, is in full evidence to those who look for it. And although it may not be registered by the scales or instruments designed to register, the coarser grades of force, still it is registered in our and in the actions resulting from our thoughts. And all the visible and invisible aspects, all the things that we know and all the things that we currently don't know are the effects of the mental state in which we identify with, which other people mirror or reciprocate with vivid accuracy that experience. So we see then the importance of the mental state that we are in. Let's zone in on this part here. Likes, dislikes, 
any kind of suggestions that we are consciously identifying with or that we are subconsciously identifying with that is playing out as the theater of life. So let's say someone was in flow and they're having that experience in the room. They're experiencing some information, maybe something someone says in conversation. And perhaps then they end up in another state of mind, one where they may feel rejected. And by rejected, more specifically put, they forget that they are complete inside. So in other words, something within them was brought to the surface. They within themselves polarize to that information and without conscious awareness, they switch themselves into a different state of mind. And so now the entire experience changes. They will notice in their communication, verbal and nonverbal, and they will also see it in the experience. And perhaps they might then say things or do things to try to get the completion from others in the room. And it's important then if these experiences play out to not further shame or condemn ourselves. And so if a person enters a lack state of mind, one where they feel incomplete, in which it plays out in convoluted behaviors and experiences with others. Maybe they have thoughts of loneliness, shame, or embarrassment. There's a few things that I recommend. Number one, suggest to yourself that you are complete inside. That will release the identification with loneliness, shame, embarrassment, or any related states that are not true and authentic to how you truly are, which is love, bliss, completion. And from there, you notice that you are then back in that experience that you consider to be ideal. And from there, everything flows again. The communication, verbal, nonverbal, known and unknown factors, which again, going back here, arising from a reflection of the mental state within. And so when I read Think and Grow Rich in 2004, and when I came across the two chapters of auto-suggestion and subconscious mind, it felt like I accessed gold in information form. Because what was communicated is that I could suggest anything to myself. And whatever I suggest to myself and accept, I become. Then also the subconscious mind aspect, whole bunch of beliefs that I created as a result of experiences, which is not true to how I ideally am. And so by working with the subconscious mind chapter, and also then discovering the power of the subconscious mind by Joseph Murphy, and I'll put a link in the description to the almost two hour video that I did on the power of the subconscious mind, I realized that I could go in and identify these beliefs beliefs in regard to shame, beliefs in regard to embarrassment, beliefs in regards to loneliness, or any kind of beliefs that are not true and authentic. I could release them. And so then what I found by bringing conscious awareness to these beliefs through these experiences, these experiences where I felt my state of mind was going from one state to another state in which I saw my beliefs playing out provided me the opportunity to release these beliefs and form the core beliefs such as I'm complete inside. Everything exists within me. What I desire desires me back. All people show up in mutual harmony and contribution to my vision as I'm in harmony and in contribution to their vision or any kind of belief of how I see myself, how I see others and how I relate with others. And this is true for all forms of interacting with people. What I notice is I'm able to maintain that state of mind. And if for whatever the reason may be, in which the experience would be one that I wouldn't consider to be ideal, I'm aware of it physically, mentally, emotionally, in the moment, and I switch it. And so all of these things here, the authoritative utterances, the physical appearance, the manner, the tones, the known and the unknown elements, or as he says here, arising from a reflection of the mental state. And so what has been the effect of working with this information? Well, I noticed in my personal life 
in my friendships, in my relationships, I notice that I'm able to maintain that authentic self-image. In other words, I'm being how I truly want to be. And what I notice is that it reflects as others accepting me. Because I have accepted myself, it plays out automatically as others accepting me. In my business life, I have great relationships with my clients, team members, vendors, business deals. We communicate harmoniously. We understand each other at a deep level, at a subtle energy level. And so we take the responsibility and we recognize that all of that that magnetic mental atmosphere is a reflection, as he says, of the mental state within. And so two things to keep into consideration. You have the ability to switch mental states instantaneously by imagining yourself as your ideal now and accepting that suggestion, by saying something to yourself that implies that you are your ideal now and accepting that suggestion you can feel yourself as your ideal now or a combination. Or as mentioned in the video that I released last week, I'll put a link in the description to it, in which I discussed effortless being. You can allow your mind to go blank and maybe take a few deep breaths and you will feel this calm center and you'll completely quiet the mental chatter. And from there, you'll automatically know what to do or not do. Or from that blank space, you can suggest to yourself that you are your ideal now. And from there, you'll enter into that ideal state and you'll notice that everything flows automatically and authentically. And so auto-suggestion is acknowledging true and accurate attributes that were always inherent within you. And by acknowledging these attributes through auto-suggestion, for example, what I desire desires me. People accept me for who I am. People love me for how I authentically am. I realize every day that I am complete and fulfilled within. I enjoy time with myself. I am my best friend. I listen to and I trust myself. And actually one of the effects of this, I notice, is it's easy for me to self-suggest. If I accept myself and I listen to myself and I trust myself and I allow myself to be how I authentically desire to be, then it's easier for me to suggest to myself. I noticed over the years in relationship with the subconscious mind and auto-suggestion, I could suggest to myself one time in regards to whatever, and I now think that way. I now believe reality to work that way, whatever I suggest to myself. And also the power of understanding auto-suggestion, suggestion, subconscious mind, is you become highly aware as to what you are suggesting to yourself in relation to any experience that you're having with another person. Verbal communication, nonverbal communication, how you feel, and as a result, you appreciate and understand yourself. That whatever thoughts show up in your mind of disharmony, in relation to loneliness, shame, embarrassment, for whatever the reason may be, you allow it to pass, or in relation to the same experience in which maybe before a person had many thoughts of loneliness, shame, and embarrassment, those thoughts no longer exist in that experience. And then it's easy to accept the suggestion because you're not walking around with these heavy beliefs. Now those thoughts don't show up. For example, I enjoy being around others. And when I travel or if I go places by myself, I never feel lonely. And what I notice is that prior to working with this information, I would feel very uneasy being alone which then when I was around people, if they did something or said something that which through my own suggestions within implied lack, that I'm not accepted, I would have had all these thoughts of loneliness. And so what I find now is those thoughts don't cross my mind. When I show up in personal life, business life, in interaction, I always feel complete. 
And this is a stark difference as to how I was before I came across this information. And it is this information that changed everything. So we are either consciously identifying with a state of mind, which is ideal, in which we're able to maintain it, or we allow ourselves via our own beliefs within to based on how we are interacting with another person, switch ourselves into different states of mind, and we have the ability to identify what we are identifying with as far as beliefs in relation to experience. And if they're in disharmony, we can release them. And if they're in harmony, we can work with auto-suggestion to further encourage them. And as mentioned, and this was very helpful for me, if you notice that when you're interacting with people in your business, in personal life, and you keep automatically identifying with certain beliefs in regards to the experience, with loneliness, shame, embarrassment, you have the ability to go through the process, as I did, and identify these beliefs and release them. And what you notice then is these recurring patterns that once played out, maybe even recurring patterns that a person thought that are patterns that are just going to be forever like that. You'll actually release them. And then you enjoy living how you truly desire to live. Relating with others in personal life, in business life, exactly how you want to without being at the whim of certain beliefs that were identified with that are not true and accurate with how you truly want to be. And this will be the regular experience. You walk into a room, you're harmonious with people, and if for whatever the reason you enter a state of mind that's not ideal, you recognize it right there in the moment and you switch it. So when we look at this part here where he says, many likes and dislikes between people meeting for the first time arise in this way each finding in the mental atmosphere of the other. And so then the source is within, and we take the responsibility. And as we take the responsibility and apply this information, the relationships change. How we relate to others change. How they relate to us change. They have to. The changes happen in known and unknown ways. We can look at the utterances of what was said, the physical appearance, the manner, the tones. We can also recognize that there's unknown energy, subtle forces. And so again, all of this gets taken care of by consciously selecting and experiencing from that mental state that is ideal to you. So I trust you found this video to be helpful. Let's go ahead and conclude this with an auto-suggestion to further encourage. You can say my authenticity, my ideal way of being from the premise of my full acceptance and love within myself expresses automatically in how others relate with me and how I relate with them. From this authentic and ideal mental state within, others show up in known and unknown ways in mutual harmonious relationships, in my family life, in my business life, in my career life, everywhere I go. Upon having these experiences, I further acknowledge these attributes in others as they are sourced and exist within me. I recognize that everything exists within me. I am complete inside. And I experience this mentally, emotionally, physically, in all my interactions with people everywhere that I go. I notice this authentic way of being represents itself more so every day in my experiences with others, representing itself from the ideal mental atmosphere, refracting out as an ideal mental atmosphere in harmony with others. If you would like a copy of this mind map, the link is in the description. Thank you very much for watching. I'll talk to you soon. Take care.